Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today I'll be talking about node pressure eviction. Now this is something that you may not have heard about before. It may be something that you have heard about and haven't really thought a huge amount about. However, it is something that will have a direct impact on how Kubernetes applications will behave under certain conditions. So it's definitely worth being aware of and paying a little bit of attention to. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into the content. And first of all, what exactly is node pressure eviction? It is when the kubelet on a node evicts a pod to reclaim node resources. So essentially, our Kubernetes node has reached a point where it is almost exhausted of some resource. And at this point, we need to evict a pod in order to free up some of that resource. Generally, when we're talking about resources, we're looking at memory, disk, and uh, processes in the case of uh, node pressure eviction. We don't consider CPU itself when discussing node pressure eviction because CPU is what's defined as a compressible resource. I won't get into the details of what that necessarily means and how that works in this video, but uh, if you want to, you can go and research that yourself. So how do we make our eviction decisions? They are defined by eviction signals, eviction thresholds, and monitoring intervals. And those uh, concepts combined uh, dictate how we actually make our decisions. And I'll now go into each of these uh, concepts. The first concept is eviction signals. So these are the actual resources and their states at a particular point in time. As I mentioned, the resources we're considering are memory, disk, and there are two file systems that we have to consider when we're talking about disk. The first is a node file system. This is our generic, uh, you can think of uh, if we're running Linux uh, nodes, just your Linux file system. And we also have uh, image fs which is our image file system for storing uh, layers of images that we have downloaded in order to run particular uh, containers finally processes we have a limited number of processes that we can run concurrently on a machine in kubernetes or a node in kubernetes and again on a linux uh, node, we'll be able to determine the maximum number of concurrent processes that we can run in this file here. So um, we would just be comparing the number of running processes to the number of uh, ma the maximum number of available processes. So on the right hand side, these are the actual uh, eviction signals as they're defined memory.available, nodefs.available, nodefs.inodes free. Uh, so inodes are used to store metadata about files in a Linux file system. So if we run out of inodes, we no longer can create new files. So this is something we have to monitor uh, with Kubernetes. Again, uh, for imagefs, we have imagefs.available and imagefs.inodes free. And finally, we have PIDs dot available or PID dot available. Now, eviction thresholds, what are these? Well, a threshold is essentially a signal, an operator and a value. So this is the format that the threshold takes up. An example would be memory dot available is less than 200 megabytes. So if we wanted to specify that we will start evictions when our memory available becomes less than 200, this is exactly what we would pass to kubelet. This is passed as a parameter when we execute kubelet. The default values for eviction thresholds that come with Kubernetes are memory.available is less than 100 megabytes, nodefs.available is less than 10%, ImageFS available is left less than 15% and inodes free uh, less than 
5%. So if you were in a scenario where you were uh, running into issues where application uh, pods were being evicted and you weren't really sure why, this is a potential cause because these default values are put in place. If your node is running out of uh, RAM and it only has 100 megs left at a particular point in time, then pods will start to be evicted. There are two types of eviction thresholds, hard and soft eviction thresholds. With soft eviction thresholds, no eviction will happen until a grace period is exceeded. And when we are specifying soft eviction thresholds, we have to pass dash dash eviction soft in combination with dash dash eviction soft grace period. And that is the time between us breaching the threshold that we have set and the evictions to starting to happen. So we will pass the actual threshold to this and then we will pass a time value to this parameter here. We also have the option to pass eviction max pod grace period. And what this specifies is actually the time that we allow pods to gracefully shut down. So this is separate to our idea of um, the eviction soft grace period. That is the time before evictions even begin to happen. Eviction mad max pod grace period is then after that, when we decide to shut down a pod and evict it, what is the duration of time that we'll allow for that pod to shut down gracefully? And that is what we are specifying here. With hard evictions, we simply pass eviction hard and there is no grace period because we will immediately evict the pod as soon as our threshold has been breached and pods are killed immediately. Now, node conditions. So if you have played around with Kubernetes a little bit, you might be aware of node conditions. For example, when we run um, kubectl describe nodes, then we will see these conditions show up. And eviction signals are actually mapped to these node conditions. So when we are under memory pressure or we are breaching our threshold for memory, then we will see this condition, uh, memory pressure flip to true. The same with disk, pre disk pressure and PID pressure. Um, so that is something to be aware of as well. If you want to quickly check which of the resources is potentially causing the eviction that you see happening, you can do so using kubectl describe node, passing the node name and then checking which of the conditions, whether it be memory pressure, disk pressure or PID pressure is set to true. And that will help you debug your issue. But when we are uh, in a situation like this and we now decide that we need to reclaim some resources, how is that done and how do we decide where we're reclaiming the resources? Well, the first thing that Kubelet does is garbage collects dead pods and containers for unused images. Next, it will start to evict pods based on the following uh, conditions. Does the pod exceed its resource limits. So when we define a pod, we will set resource requests and limits. And if the pod is beyond the specified limit, then it is increased in terms of its priority for eviction. Next, we look at the pod priority. So if the pod is uh, set to have a very high priority, it is then less likely to be evicted because the application that is running needs to stay running. And finally, resource utilization relative to what is requested for that pod. Now, there are some additional considerations before we wrap up. The first one is this parameter that we can also specify and pass to Kubla, which is eviction minimum reclaim. So for a particular resource, we may want to specify that when we 
a Victor Potter set of pods, we need to regain a certain amount of said resource. That may be, you know, 100 megabytes of memory or 200 megabytes of memory or a certain number of gigabytes of disk space or a certain number of inodes. However, uh, it's just worthwhile being aware that we can specify that. And this av avoids a situation where we do some uh, evictions and then because the evictions didn't actually clear a huge amount of the resource, we then go back to a scenario where we have to do more evictions. Um, it allows us to target pods that maybe are taking up more of the resource that is uh, currently limited. Pods may also be umkilled. So if we are at a point in memory utilization where the actual Linux kernel steps in and out of memory kills a pod or a process, uh, that that may very well happen before eviction actually takes place, especially if we have set uh, thresholds that are broader for eviction or if we're giving more grace to pods before uh, shutting them down, then um, there are limitations within the node itself that will go away and kill processes and may kill uh, you know processes that are running our pods. Finally, we can set our monitoring interval. So this is the interval that Kubelet uses to resample the different resources within the node. And we do that by setting this housekeeping interval parameter. The default for this parameter is 10 seconds, but we can also obviously adjust that to our own requirements. And that is all for this video. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video.